a common mistake artists make is thinking that shadow is just darkness. So they either make the shadow just a darker shade of light or use pure black and a soft brush to shade it. This often comes off as a natural. I'm not talking about art styles that uses black as hard shading by the way. They still use what I'm going to talk about here, but they also use black to exaggerate harsh shadows. Unless you're in space or in an environment with very controlled lighting, the shadow will have a different color or hue from the direct light. Instead of thinking of the shadow as a darker light, think of it as a different light source altogether. The shadow is actually the ambient light or the light being bounced around by the environment so their hue and saturation will be influenced by whatever object they are reflected by. Let's say we're in a blue room with one source of white light in the middle and a white sphere underneath it. The light will hit the top half of the sphere which will cast a shadow on the floor. This is called cast shadow and the shadow on the sphere is called form shadow. Cast shadows are formed by objects blocking the path of light. Generally, the closer the object is, the sharper the edges of the shadow. Form shadows on the other hand are just faces of the object that are facing away from the light. In curved objects, the edge between light and shadow tends to be very soft. But to keep things simple, we're gonna ignore that for now. The remaining light will hit the floor and bounce back, which will hit the bottom part of the sphere. Because blue objects only reflect blue light, the only light that will be reflected will be blue. But because there's less light being reflected, it will be darker than the original light. The sphere and the ball are in the only places the light will hit. It will also hit the walls. The walls are farther off to the ball than the floor, so the light they reflect will be weaker than the one on the floor. This according to square cube law. So the light here will be even darker. This light will come from all directions that are not being lit up by the direct light and the bounce light. I like to divide this into three groups. The direct light, which is the strongest light in the scene. The average shadow, which is the ambient light from all directions. And the bounce light that comes from the closest surface, oftentimes the floor. There's a lot more to consider, especially if you want a more realistic art style. But I think focusing and getting more comfortable with these three is much more important. Let's apply this in the sketch. Let's say we're at noon in a field. When I start coloring, I often start with the average shadow. In this scene, the ambient light will come from a lot of sources. The skylight, the trees, the rocks, etc. You wouldn't see all these individual lights. They would all kind of blend into each other. In this case, the blue skylight will most likely dominate the other lights. But the color will be weak weaker and less saturated. So I would paint in the subject in that desaturated bluish light. We can use blending modes to make this simpler. I often use multiply but soft light can also work. Just make a blue layer and clip it on the layers below and set it to blending mode of your choice. Then play around the opacity. But I often just paint in the colors directly. Here's a quick explanation on how I choose the color. The character skin is in this orange group but the light is in the blue group. So how would they interact with each other? Think of the orange trying to become blue. The more intense the light is, the bluer the skin will look and it will try to shift towards it from orange to red to purple then to blue. Now you need a lot of blue to get there and the ambient light isn't that strong or even saturated so it will only get to here which is the red group. There's a bit more going on here but if I explain it, it's going to take a lot of time so if you want me to make another video explaining it in more detail, let me know. Next, I painted the light. The sunlight is mostly white but because of some physics stuff, it appears just slightly lightly yellow during the day. So I don't have to shift the hue that much, if at all. I can either use blending modes like color dodge or glow dodge for this, or just paint in the color I want directly. It's your choice with how you want to proceed with painting the light. But what I usually do is I paint in the bigger shapes, then erase the parts that's going to be in shadow. Like the shadows cast to her face by her hair. Knowing where to put the light is another skill in on itself. Here's a way you can do it. You can draw the character on the point of view of the light. The light is coming from directly above her. So if I draw her from the top view, I can see which parts are going to be lit up and the parts that are not directly visible will be in shadow. Next is the bounce light from the ground, which is covered with grass. Remember that the bounce light is strongest at the bottom, and it plateaus a little bit the further it goes up. It's good to note that some artists would make the bounce light stronger than what it might be in reality, to make it feel more real, if that makes sense. This process isn't necessarily the only way you can go about this. You can paint in the light first before the shadow. There's not much difference as long as you know what colors to use, but I almost always prefer doing it with the ambient light first, because the direct light is usually easier to manipulate and change. Like if I want to change the direction of the sunlight, I can just delete what I did and I can paint it in whatever direction I want it to be without touching the ambient light. Or put her under the shade of a tree and erase the parts that the leaves will cast shadow on. I know this isn't the most comprehensive
comprehensive explanation, but I think it's a decent framework to start thinking with your lighting. Not all scenes will fit this framework. Like look at this Breaking Bad frame. The ambient light is dominated by orange from the desert floor and the cliffs, but there are some blue skylight that you can see on top of Walt's head. I would suggest studying real life photos or movie and TV scenes like this. See what lights are present and see how the objects shift in color because of it. You can also study other artists work, especially since they usually use simple and readable shapes for their lights. Goodbye.